What is your epic dream? Epic dream. My epic dream is to teach math to the entire black community. That's my that's my epic dream. If if that is the definition of your definition of epic, you know, epic. I was assuming you meant something large, you know. Um, yeah, I like to kind of sometimes create goals that may seem unattainable, but you know, it's something. It's always something to shoot for, and I mean, you never know if it's unattainable until you try it. Hi, and welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursday, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited about this brother. Let's see. He is the CEO of an educational services oriented company. He also is a math professor, and he's a dad. His name is Mr. Akil Parker. Hi, Akil. Hey, how you doing? Good to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you too. So glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. And Akil, um, this narrative, this this conversation, this podcast is really about busting open the very myopic um, and narrowly defined narrative about Black men with the goal of um, helping all of us to see our fellow man, if you will, in a much broader, more nuanced way. And ultimately, for a young king who may or may not have positive Black role models, to come to this repository, see the same six questions answered over by over 150 men, and, and see and hopefully find guidance there. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or even Black, for us to be able to come and have our minds and our thoughts expanded again so that you can live as the human that you are in the, your full, full humanity and that we as a community can grow because you can be all that you can be. And so I'm so glad that you are here to uh, join us on this in this conversation and in this repository. And I'm going to ask the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Well, manhood means to me the fulfilling the responsibility of being a provider and a protector. But even deeper, if we like unpack that, um, I think of it more in terms of education, like providing education in order to so like children and other people in the community can be able to protect themselves. Um, oftentimes due to, you know, unaware lack of awareness and ignorance we're easily taken advantage of easily oppressed um and you may not even know it so you know manhood to me is in part in large part being a provider and being a protector but not of your own not just of your only only of your own biological children per se um or those within your own household but community members you know members of the community i think that provision that, that you know the providing and the protection should extend you know into the community and beyond you know, um, in terms of like, you know, being being oriented more towards collectivism as opposed to rugged individualism, you know, so that's what that's what manhood means to me, being a provider and a protector and very high on that list goes education, being able to educate those, you know, provide education to, you know, people in the community. That's really great. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. So, Kiel, who and or what is important to you? Well, um, kind of what I alluded to in the last question, um, you know, my community, you know, my family, you know, my children that I'm, I'm responsible for. Um, I guess that would be the who. Um, what is important to me? Um, African liberation, you know, African liberation, black liberation. Um, um, one of the scholars that I've studied 
you know, uh, named the late uh, Jacob Carruthers, you know, often would say, you know, how do we get out of this mess that we're in? So, you know, that's important to me, us getting out of the mess that we're in and figuring out ways, you know, to effectively do that. And, you know, and then also once we get out of the mess that we're in, being able to maintain ourselves in a way where we don't get back into the mess that we got out of, you know, and at the the same time, understanding that, you know, we not the work that we're doing to lead to that goal, we not be, we may not be able to live to see the fruits of that labor, but our children may be able to see it. Our grandchildren, our great grandchildren may be able to see it. So that's why it's still important regardless of whether we get to physically see it ourselves it's an investment in the future you know for those that you know are going to come after us you know so those are some things that are that are definitely you know very important to me and that's that's what my life's work is committed to you know helping us you know kind of yeah like i said get out of the mess that we're in improve our condition yes 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 i hear you i hear you thank you so i kill how do you want us to see you um just as a brother, you know, on the, you know, brother and member of the community, you know, doing his, doing his part to try to, you know, build community and help the community and just play his part, you know, because I think if like everybody has a part to play and, you know, as long as we all play our part, you know, things will definitely improve. And sometimes, you know, we do have to compensate for the fact that, you know, some may not be playing their part or may not know how to play their part. So as a result, you know, some of us have to do more. And, you know, and that's fine, too. That's just that's just the way it goes sometimes. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. So question four is, what is your epic dream? Epic dream. My epic dream is to teach math to the entire black community. That's my that's my epic dream. If if that is the definition of your definition of epic, you know, epic, I was assuming you meant something large. You know, um, yeah, I like to kind of sometimes create goals that may seem unattainable, but, you know, it's something that's always something to shoot for. And I mean, you never know if it's unattainable until you try it, you know. So. So, yeah, that's that's my goal. My my epic dream is to teach mathematics to the entire black community and for, you know, my company and my resources to be those that are utilized by our entire community, whether it be books that I've published um, books that I will publish going forward, um, the YouTube channel that I maintain, you know, having that be a location for people, whether it be, whether it be children, whether it be parents that, you know, don't understand the new math and get frustrated by it very easily, a place for them to go to, to, you know, understand, you know, the, the math homework that their children are coming home with or their grandchildren are coming home with or their, their nieces and nephews are coming home with so that they can actually, you know, help, you know, help them with their math homework. Um, and I want for all this math, you know, my company to be the location and the and the space, you know, for them to go to and say, look, this is where we can get our help so that we can, you know, again, because it's all about helping community, you know, and, and being a part of being a man, uh, providing and protecting, you know, by providing education. So I'm trying to, you know, provide resources, you know, because we have a lot of work that we need to do. And, you know, parents are going to have to do more. Grandparents are going to have to do more. Everybody's going to have to do more. But we can't just tell people that they have to do more. We can't just admonish people to do more. We have to also provide resources and provide guidance and show them, like, how to do more. Like, this is how you can do more so that we can, you know, make advancements. So that's my dream. To teach teach everybody. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent. Great. Thank you. So question five, you've been answering all along implicitly, but I'm going to ask you explicitly, Mr. Akil Parker, who are you? Um, a black man <laughs> trying to play his part. Black man trying to play his part, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, black man trying to play his part, to try to improve conditions and, and, and leave the world a, a better place than the way it was when I when I first got here physically back in nineteen eighty. You know, and be a good be a good father. Um, be the best father that I could be, become a better father, become a better person every single day that goes by. And um and just be an honest man, you know. And learn and learn from all my, all my mistakes. 
and yeah. also hopefully and hopefully have other people learn from my mistakes too. If other people can learn from my mistakes, then you know it, it can it can benefit them as well. That's awesome. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. That's great. So here we are already at question six, which is: Is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't know you wanted me to ask you that I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? What did you miss? I don't know if you really missed anything. I mean, we talked about a lot. Um, you can ask me about the resources that I have available for the community. So, okay. So I just start talking about the resources. So, and I kind of alluded to this already, but you know, I'll, I'll reinforce it. Cause I think that's they're that important. So I created a book called how to use all this math volume one, which is a, a guidebook for parents, grandparents, you know, caregivers, guardians to show how we can, t they can take everyday activities that they're already doing anyway and use those as teachable moments and kind of as math lessons so that the children they're responsible for can develop math skills and practice math skills so that they'll be prepared for math class. Now, notice I said prepared for math class. That may sound foreign to a lot of people because the way most of us have been conditioned is that, you know, you don't really have to prepare your children to go to math class. You kind of just send your children to math class and the math teacher is going to give them all the preparation they need. But we have seen you know, from experience that that really doesn't work. That approach does not work. And children have to be prepared before they go into that classroom. So one of the ways we can do that is, you know, by just looking at everyday, act everyday things right around us, whether it be in the kitchen, whether it be in the car, whether it be in the grocery store and the um, convenience store, you know, things, signs you see on the highway or in the street, you know, and just when you see opportunities, to, you know, do a rhythm, practice arithmetic, practice algebra, practice geometry, then we take advantage of those opportunities. And I also, and the reason I wrote the book is because I, I, I would see these things. I would see these opportunities. I would see these like sample lessons and these sample problems. But I realized that I see it because I'm immersed in math on a regular and daily basis, whereas most people are not. So they may not be able to see it. But I want people to have the benefit. I want the community to be able to benefit from what I'm able to see. So I published my, my first book, How to Use All This Math, Volume 1. Uh, which can be found on Amazon. Um, so parents would be able to then be able to see, okay, I can take this tool and I can like be a math teacher for my children, like right in the household. So then when they go to school, they're not overwhelmed by the topics that they see that their teachers present them with. And they can just, you know, kind of hit the ground running. That's then, amazing. Um, that's one resource. Then I mentioned the, and volume Two will be is scheduled to be released at the end of the summer, end of summer 2024. So volume two is going to be, you know, the first book has 20 examples, you know, 20 each, each chap, each example is a chapter. There are 20 examples in, you know, in, in volume one, volume two is going to have 20 more chapters. And then volume three, when that comes out, it's going to have another 20. So that's kind of how I'm, I'm organizing the, the, the material. And then there's the YouTube channel, which I'm very proud of, which currently has over 730 videos on it, ranging from arithmetic up to calculus one. So, you know, I really want, like I said, I really want that to be the space where people go if they, you know, need assistance. You know, maybe, you know, you might need tutoring, but tutoring might be cost prohibitive to you. So I have pre-recorded videos, you know, on the YouTube channel, you know, um, that you can watch whenever, as long as you have Internet access, you know, and you. your phone, your laptop, your tablet, um, or your stream on your TV, you can pull up YouTube on your TV, you know? Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, the YouTube channel, you know, it's a, it's a community resource, you know, I want everybody to have access to this because I've, I've heard the complaints about the difficulty of math or, you know, and the new math. And I don't want people to struggle. I don't want people to have the struggle, you know, um, my children, I'm, of course, I'm a math educator. I've been a math teacher for almost 20 years. I've been a math professor for the past six years. And I have three children. And when people meet my children, you know, typically, you know, people think, well, you know, you're probably you, these children are probably really good at math and they are pretty good at math. But that's because I've trained them and developed them in a certain way. But it doesn't really benefit my children to be great at math. And while they're part of a community that is weak at math overall. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially through the books, through the YouTube channel and even through the private tutoring that we do. I'm attempting to enable the rest of the community to have the same access 
to opportunity to develop math proficiency and math mastery that my children have had. So I'm trying to share that opportunity, you know, in order to really level the playing field, you know? So, so yeah, it's all, like I said, it's all about resources and, you know, stay tuned because there will be, you know, even more resources. As I mentioned, all this math volume two will be, you know, coming out um, the end of the summer. And also during the summer, I'm based in Philadelphia, but I'll be spending a lot of time in Baltimore this summer, you know, offering my first histomatics summer program. And histomatics, if anyone that may not know, is a teaching framework that I've developed over the years where I use black history to teach mathematics and also use mathematics to teach black history. So, you know, for example, in the summer program, we're going to be covering certain books such as the autobiography of Malcolm X, um, Asada Shakur's autobiography, The Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson, um, Black Power by Kwame Ture and Charles V. Hamilton, and also the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass. So we're going to be reading those books and those books are actually going to be essentially used as math textbooks. So I'm going to create now my curriculum comes from creating mathematical word problems coming from the information within those books. So the students and the youth, um, I'm, I'm servicing middle school students as well as high school students. They'll be learning the history and the experiences, you know, the political science, you know, um, the struggle, you know, everything, of, you know, about, you know, those people endured and they talked about um, and the mathematics at the same time. You know, and that's what histomatics is, is is about. You know, again, using black history to teach mathematics, using mathematics to teach black history, you know, to make it even even more make the math even more meaningful. So yeah, again, it's a, it's about resources. So I, I plan to offer that type of program in, you know, going forward in other cities, you know, or maybe even virtually. This is an in, in person program, so maybe, you know, virtually in the future or other in person in other cities um as time goes on. This is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And so I'm so glad that you brought this up and just thank you so much. I I I was tempting myself. I can't I, I can't I gotta go with it. Can you give us an example of how you can teach mathematics through black history using one of an example from one of the texts? Definitely. So uh, histomatics is broken down into five different elements. So one of the elements is I entitled it numerical triggers. So what I may do, like, you know, as an example is, you know, if I'm teaching addition, you know, to some young children, maybe some like four or five year olds, you know, six year olds, um, early elementary school age, I may create a problem, create a an addition problem where um, I intentionally know that my sum is going to be one thousand seven hundred ninety one. Right. So I go through the whole process, you know, we're adding the digits, you know, we may have to carry the carry the ones and, and whatnot, you know, regroup and do that. We go through that process. But then once we get to the answer and we see that, oh, the answer, the sum is 1,791. We look at that as a date and we say, oh, well, what happened in 1791? Oh, that's when the Haitian Revolution started. So now we can have the conversation about, you know, Dessalines, um, you know, uh, Toussaint, um, Henri Christophe, um, Bukman Dutty, Cecile Fatiman, you know, all those all those people. Um, and also talk about, you know, the relevance to the United States and like, well, how did you know, like, why did the Louisiana Purchase really happen? You know, oh, because Napoleon needed money because they were losing money because they were losing that war, that 13 year struggle. They were losing, actually. Um, and it was our ancestors, our African brothers and sisters down in San Domingue, current day Haiti, that were, you know, kicking the kicking the Spanish, kicking the French, kicking the British all around. Um, and, you know, Napoleon needed money. So we can kind of debunk that idea that, you know, Thomas Jefferson was just this great, you know, statesman that, you know, was such a great and shrewd, you know, uh, negotiator when, no, Napoleon was desperate and he needed money. So that's part of how, you know, um, that stolen land, you know, land that was already stolen, got sold to, you know, some other thieves, basically. Um but, you know, but then but we're having but it's a math lesson that has political and historical context instead of it just being, oh, OK, we did this math problem. We got 17, 1791. OK, cool. Let's go on to the next problem. Like, let's pause for a minute. And let's talk about the significance of that number, that number, that year. You know, I might create a problem, you know, where. 381 is the sum or the difference, you know, and then we say, well, what, what, why is that significant? Well, the Montgomery bus boycott lasted 381 days. 
you know, a little, a little over a year. So, you know, that's, so that's, that's, that, those are, those are just a couple of examples from like, you know, the first element of, of histematics, you know, how we, we give, we give more meaning to, to the numbers while, you know, teaching the skill of, you know, how to do the arithmetic, how to do the actual calculations. Like, how do we do the addition? How do we do the subtraction, the multiplication and division? And with the hope that, you know, for, as years go on and time goes on, you know, children will remember like those numbers will be, they'll be triggered by those numbers. They'll remember those numbers. Those numbers will have a significance, just like your birthday, your birthday or birth date has a significance. You know, you always remember, like if you're born on the 25th, you like, when you see the number 25, you're thinking, Oh, that's my birthday. That's a significant number to me. Right. Cause there's a story connected to that. Cause that's the day you were born, you know, um, or the year you were born that has a significance also. So, um, that's one of the, one of the goals of histematics is to, you know, be able to teach the black history while teaching math at the mathematics at the same time. Got it. Uh, that is brilliant. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. Thank you for all of your work. I love how you are really looking at our entire community. Like you said, not just the people in your family or just even the people immediately in your circle, but the entire community, all of us, which is really wonderful and beautiful. And so I honor you, my king. I, I pray that your epic dream comes true. I don't know if you can see it but i um am actually a certified financial planner and a musician so i got i use both sides of my brain right and i think there's a strong connection i know there's a strong connection to math and and mm-hmm. music for example um so whenever someone says um you know they love math or they want to teach math i'm so excited about it and so um everyone needs to learn math i think um and it's very useful in our lives even how we problem solve is very useful. Um, And so thank you so much for for joining us today. I appreciate you having me on. I I enjoyed the conversation and, you know, I I always enjoy talking about math and talking about my work and, and also just, you know, as a, as a black person, just having positive conversation around math, because I think for so long we've been overwhelmed with such negativity and negative propaganda and negative conversations around math. And I'm just trying to, you know, shift the narrative and push back on that and say, you know, I understand that a lot of us have had negative experiences, but some of us have had positive experiences around involving math as well. And I think we should talk about those, those positive experiences also. So, you know, young people can hear these conversations and they can possibly feel that, you know, that they can have a positive experience, you know, in, with math and, you know, whether it be in the classroom or whether it be in the street or on the corner or wherever, you know, and they not feel intimidated or unconfident that, you know, that they can't use this as a tool because math should be a tool that we run toward instead of a bully that we run away from. I, I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree. Thank you. Thank you so much. And stay right there because I want to thank the audience for joining us today. I really hope that you enjoyed this conversation and learned as much as I did. And if there is a positive and successful Black man in your life who you want to see highlighted in and hear from in this forum, please click the link below or my bio. Fill out the nomination form and we'll take it from there. We are really just with every conversation chipping away at the very narrow myopic narration of men, black men, I should say, specifically in media and in our society writ large. And we really want to highlight these brothers who are doing amazing things in our community. Now, they may be a math loving professor or not. We're looking for the brothers who are holding it down in their community, who are um, examples for the people in their community and have an impact, a positive impact on them from the nuclear family to the larger community writ large and everyone in between. We want those brothers also to contribute to this conversation. So stay tuned next week for yet another amazing King. And please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thanks so much, Akil. Thank you so much. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it.